Let's get back to Jim Rogers. Jim is the CEO of uh, Rogers Holdings. Jim, the, um, the Wall Street Journal had a, an interesting piece about uh, a colleague, uh, ex-colleague and contemporary of yours, George Soros, suggesting that he's now exiting the gold and silver trade. Um, do you still keep in touch? Has he told you that he's no, getting no, out of I gold have, now? I have no idea. It's been uh, 30, 31 years ago, so I ha don't have a... You might as well ask me about my first wife. You know, I, I have, I'm, not, I'm not in touch with her either. As, are the, as are the feelings the same with regard to him and the <laughs> no, first wife? No, I liked my first wife. No, I mean, I wish I had... I wish I could see her. She's, she was nice. She used to be. I hope she still is. Um, I have no idea. Uh, certainly, I hope that silver goes down for a while because, you know, it was, it was turning into a parabolic move, as I said earlier. Every parabolic move ends badly. I hope that silver and all commodities continue to go up, you know, with normal corrections along the way. And in five or ten years, they're going to be unbelievably high prices. And then I hope I'm smart enough to sell if, it, if the bull market is coming to an end. That's my way to play. If anything turns into a parabolic move, you have to sell. But if, if I mean, we know that uh, Soros is a long-term investor, little like yourself, and um, looks at big trend shifts. If he is starting to sell, do you think that our retail audience who are watching should also think about what their holdings are right now? I mean, is well, he onto something, maybe? I, I, again, you have to ask him. I don't know. I do know that silver went up 25% in a month or something like that. It went up 50% in, in four months. That's not normal. You normally have a correction after things like that. And people who are good at market timing, people who are good traders, probably will take profits at that point, and then when they go down, buy them back. I'm too lazy, first of all, and I'm not smart enough, second of all. I'm the world's worst market timer. How many times have I told you, Jeff? Yeah. I'm the single worst market timer in the world. There's a difference between trading, though, and spotting the big trend and then getting the, the big trend right. What, what would your interpretation of this current market phase be, where we, we seem to have a... It's only short term, I know, but, but there is a pullback going on. You mean on. for precious metals? Yeah. No, I, I hope we have a pullback. I hope it goes down for a while. It'll be good for the market. It'll be good for the long-term view of the market. Silver touched 50 or 49 last week, whatever it was. Let's say silver goes to 38, 35, 33. Fine. Wonderful. It's not the end of the world. In 1987, stocks went down 40 to 80 percent, you know, when we had the big crash. Smart people st stepped in and bought more. And then stocks went up 8, 10, 1,200 percent after that. You don't even remember 1987. It looks like a blip if you look at it. That's what's going to be happening with silver and gold right now. If it goes down, I hope I'm smart enough to buy more. But don't ask me about the market timing. Watch CNBC. Yeah. You watch CNBC and you can get market timing. I'm not any good at it. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about a couple of the long-term issues which we raised at the top of this hour. Um, and um, one of our correspondents just responding to, you know, we're asking generally, where is the oil? What are the size of reserves out there? And we talked a little bit about shale. And he's um, replied, well, Eagle Ford, for instance, uh, from ground to market, $30 a barrel. Uh, Barkin, $60 uh, to market. Trillions of barrels combined. I've just been doing a little bit of work. There are estimates. Now, how much of this is recoverable? I don't know. But 900 billion, beg your pardon, yeah, 900 million uh, reserves at Eagle uh, Ford Shell at least. They're talking about Barkin, the same kind of numbers. Steve, 900 million is nothing. The world uses 86 million barrels of oil every day. Every day. That's 365 days a year. Do the arithmetic. Well, I mean, we found some big fields off the coast of Brazil, we think. They say they we have anyway. Let's say that the, the wildest bull estimate is correct. It adds less than two years reserves yeah, to the world. Even without, I mean, okay, I mean, I think they're talking about uh, 2.5 billion barrels of total ore discovery in the uh, U.S. But um, let's talk about proven ore reserves as well. That's even without the most recent estimates from Iran and Iraq, of, who've both actually been competing with each other as much as anything else to up their reserves rates. We're, we're, we're talking about, now let me get my trillions and, uh, and billions right, but I mean, uh, basically, I think it was like one point. 1,000 uh, billion barrels left, 1.3 thousand billion barrels left. I mean, we're talking about, that's 40 years alone without any of this shale stuff involved. Well, then you should speak with the IEA because the IEA has different numbers. Now, I don't know the source of your numbers, but the IEA says that within... Or the CIA. 
The CIA. The old fact book. Fact book from uh, the CIA. Well, I, I, with all due respect, I don't get my advice from the American government. I don't get my advice from any government. If you're going to, if you're going to rely on governments for your investment advice, well, the you're going to go is broke. Part of isn't, it, isn't that a combination <laughs> of uh, OECD governments, 27 it's, OECD governments? Isn't that is, what the IEA is? It is the. Uh, the group which sort of looks after the world or all those situations. consumer nations. Yes, so it's kind of government related, isn't it? Okay. It's, 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 di it's whatever it is, it's different from the CIA. I have more confidence in the IEA. They can be wrong too. Of course. Oh, absolutely. please, for goodness absolutely. sakes. For goodness yeah, sakes. Next thing you know, we'll be taking advice from the IMF. And they're worse than anybody or the World Bank. Oh. Hey, they're bailing out <laughs> Europe. I know, that's bad for my nervous system too. Uh, let's go back to Jim in just a moment. Squatbox Europe at CNBC.com. We'll pick up some more of your comments and questions.